we were asked to multiply the given radical expressions. Notice in each product we have a single radical expression times a similar difference of terms, which means to determine the product, we will need to distribute. So for number one, to determine the product, we distribute the square root of x, which gives us two products. This is equal to the square root of x times two square root of x minus the square root of x times three. Now we determine the products using the rules for multiplying radicals shown here. To determine the product of the square root of x and two square root of x, we multiply the x's under the square roots or we multiply the radicands. This equals two times the square root of x times x. And then we have minus the square root of x times three equals three square root x. Now we simplify the square roots. Notice how the square root of x times x will simplify because the radicand is a perfect square. Let's write this one more time using exponents to emphasize x times x is a perfect square. Let's write this as two times the square root of x squared minus three square root x. And now we simplify. The square root of x squared simplifies perfectly to one factor of x. This equals two x minus three square root x. But because the index on the square root is even, the index is two, and the exponent on the simplified variable is odd, because x equals x to the first, we must include an absolute value around the x. The product is equal to two times the absolute value of x minus three square root x. Next, to determine the product of number two, we distribute four square root y. Once again, we have two products. We have four square root y times five square root xy cubed minus four square root y times the square root of y cubed. To determine this first product, we multiply the numbers outside the square roots, then we multiply the radicands. Four times five is equal to 20. So we have 20 square root of y times xy cubed equals xy to the fourth. And then we have minus four square root y times the square root of y cubed is equal to four times the square root of y to the fourth. And now we simplify both square roots by identifying the perfect square factors of the radicand. Notice y to the fourth is a perfect square because y to the fourth is equal to y squared times y squared. So let's write this as 20 times the square root of x times y squared times y squared minus four times the square root of y squared times y squared. Again, y squared times y squared is a perfect square here as well as here. To emphasize this further, let's use the power property of exponents and write y squared times y squared as y to the second squared. This is equal to 20 times the square root of x times y to the second squared minus four times the square root of y to the second squared. And now we simplify. The square root of y to the second squared simplifies perfectly to one factor of y squared. This is equal to 20 y squared times the square root of x minus, again, the square root of y to the second squared simplifies to one factor of y to the second. So we have minus four y to the second or minus four y squared. In this expression, no absolute value is required because while the index is even, the exponent on these simplified variables are even and not odd. And now to determine the last product. In this product, when we distribute, we'll have a total of one, two, three products. We have the cube root of z times the cube root of z squared minus the cube root of z times seven times the cube root of z to the fifth. And finally we have plus the cube root of z times two times the cube root of z to the eighth. For this first product, we multiply the radicands, which gives us the cube root of z cubed minus, here we have seven, and then we multiply the radicands again, which gives us the cube root of z to the sixth, and then we have plus two, 
Then we multiply the radicands, which gives us the cube root of z to the ninth. And now we simplify the cube roots by identifying the perfect cube factors of the radicands. Well, first we have the cube root of z cubed. z cubed is obviously a perfect cube, so this will simplify perfectly. Next we have minus seven times the cube root of z to the sixth, but z to the sixth is also a perfect cube because it's equal to z squared times z squared times z squared. This will also simplify perfectly. And finally we have plus two times the cube root of z to the ninth, but z to the ninth is also a perfect cube because it's equal to z to the third times z to the third times z to the third. So once again, this will also simplify perfectly. To emphasize this even more, let's rewrite this as the cube root of z to the third minus seven times the cube root of z squared raised to the third power. Notice how this is still z to the sixth. Then we have plus two times the cube root. Let's write this product as z to the third cubed or raised to the third power. And now we simplify. The cube root of z to the third simplifies perfectly to one factor of z. So we have z minus seven times the cube root of z squared raised to the third simplifies perfectly to one factor of z squared. And then we have plus two times the cube root of z to the third cubed simplifies perfectly to one factor of z cubed. This is our final product. And because the index is odd, no absolute value is required. I hope you found this helpful.